This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome you to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Cranberry. I am Pastor Hannah, and on behalf of all of our worship leaders, we are glad that you can join us for virtual worship. Whether you are worshiping on Facebook or on YouTube, I invite you to take a moment and to let your presence be made known in the comments that seeing each other's names, we might feel a little bit more connected while we worship from home. The worship committee is working very hard to plan a meaningful Advent, even as we worship from home. And I am excited to share with you that on December 6th, the first Sunday in December, we will try worshiping on Zoom. Many churches have used Zoom as their worship platform since March, and you don't need to worry about the details of all of that just yet. I just want you to know that we are committed to being connected, even in these next few months, um, and we're going to try new things until we hit the mark. It is Commitment Sunday, when we make our commitments to the church for the 2021 year and dedicate our pledges to God. Today we will pray for the church as we invest in its future and in the ministry of Jesus Christ. If you missed the opportunity to turn in your pledge card on Realm, our church app, or you didn't get a virtual pledge card via email, no worries. Let me or our church office know. Let our stewardship chair, Matt Curran, know, and someone will make sure that we get you what you need to make your pledge. Today, we also want to express very sincere and heartfelt gratitude to the Boy Scouts and the entire community of Cranberry and beyond for the Thanksgiving food drive. The response was incredible. Our stage in the fellowship hall is filled this high with donations to be sorted. And four of our church families have come to sort between yesterday and today. And the week ahead is a carefully coordinated schedule of deacons and volunteers keeping the whole Thanksgiving food basket operation not only safe, but as joyful and abundant as ever. God is good, and we give thanks. The other announcements of our church life run in slides at the end of this worship video, and so I invite you to watch until the end and to consider how God might be calling you to get involved in the life of our church. Together, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. Lift your eyes to the Lord, the exalted one, who is enthroned in the heavens. Seeking compassion, seeking grace, we look to the Lord, the giver of mercy. Pour into God's temple, Draw near to the King of creation. We worship the Lord of heaven and earth. Confident in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession. 
Lord, you have made us stewards of your creation and commissioned us to carry out your work to the best of our ability. But we have not served you with all of our energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We withhold our gifts and live in fear. Have mercy upon us, we pray. Make us bold to use our talents for the sake of your kingdom until you come in glory. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Alleluia. Amen. Peace be with you. 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 Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, verse, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Let us listen to the word of God. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded them, traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, he, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? 
then you ought to have invested my money with the, with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. For this, as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, this one is just really hard. There are at least two solid ways to preach it, and they contradict each other almost completely. I have gone back and forth all week, and I'm happy to talk to you about what I gleaned in each interpretation if you want a more academic conversation. But that's not what I'm going to preach today, because when I feel this torn about a text, I know what I have to do. I have to go with the feelings, because feelings are my wheelhouse. And there are two feelings in this text that stick out to me, joy and fear. All of us know joy and fear. Jesus's audience knew joy and fear. We don't need to understand the cultural differences present in 2,000 years of time having passed to understand joy and fear. These are universal, timeless feelings. So joy, the first two slaves take what they have received from their master and invest it, trade it, and double its worth. The one who had five made five more, and the one who had two made two more. Now these are hyperbolic amounts. That gets lost in five and two. One talent was worth 6,000 denarii, or 20 years of a day laborer's wages. So five talents is 100 years of pay just handed over, and two talents is 40 years of pay, and one talent is still a lot, 20 years of pay. It is extravagant, abundant, extra, more than one 
could have ever imagined being given. It's like the lottery. The hyperbole, it should clue us in that this isn't a literal story. It is, of course, a parable. It is meant to turn things upside down, to provoke, challenge, and inspire. And just when we think we understand a parable, the parable then again provokes, challenges, and inspires us to something altogether different. And I don't think Jesus is actually condoning the kind of investing that would have turned so much money into so much more because that would have been done for sure on the backs of vulnerable people, the very people Jesus came to live with and minister to. So this is, and this is still the same Jesus who preached, blessed are the poor and the meek, and who came to feed the hungry and to clothe the naked and to liberate the slave and to protect the orphan. Jesus who preaches this, gives this parable is still a poor migrant preacher, not a wealthy slave master. So what is Jesus trying to teach us? We know that an extravagant, unimaginable amount was given. And from that abundance, the slaves took risk and ventured out and added to what was as they worked to create something more. And to these two slaves, the master replies, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Enter into the joy. The invitation is to joy. It is an invitation to recognize the extravagance that has already been given to each of us by God and then to respond with joyful lives. It is first and foremost about who God is. God is a God who gives extravagantly. And then it is about who we are, those who respond in gratitude and enjoy participating in the growing of God's kingdom. It isn't about a future reward like heaven, but about a current, lived way of being. We enter into the joy here and now because of what God has already done and already provided. And that's one response to who God is. And the other response is modeled for us by the third slave from verse 25. I was afraid. What was he afraid of? Afraid of not being faithful to the master? Afraid of displeasing the master? Afraid of who he thought he knew the master to be? Afraid of the amount that had been given to him and trusted to him? Afraid, afraid of what to do with such extravagance? Afraid of losing it? It's hard to say why precisely he was afraid, but we can relate to the fear for sure. We get fear. We understand, certainly, that sometimes things seem too good to be true, and that makes us quite afraid. And we know how little we can accomplish when we are operating out of fear. Fear will keep us from risk. Fear will paralyze us. Fear will make us small. Fear will make us lash out against the ones who had our best interest in mind all along. The third, sla the third slave's fear seems to be born from a place of misunderstanding about who the master was. Some will call this parable the parable of the third slave instead of the parable of the talents. Because the lesson here is really about what we lose when we live in fear. Fear leads us to the weeping, lonesome valley. The third slave misunderstood who the master was. He was not a harsh master, but rather a very generous one who rewards richly. And God is a God of extravagance, not of harshness. God is a God of steadfast love who chases us down with goodness and mercy and forgives us time and time again. God gives freely, so the question of the parable becomes, how will we respond to the extravagance of God, in joy or in fear? It reminds me of the words of the Apostle Paul, as paraphrased by Eugene Peterson's The Message, from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 
Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you are living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection, writes Paul, open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. In response to who God is, we can choose to be small out of fear, or we can choose to be wide open and expansive in joy. Today is Commitment Sunday. Today we are invited to respond to who God is and to what God has so extravagantly blessed us with, with simple, with a simple, powerful proclamation, I'm in. I'm in, God. I'm in, church. I'm in, neighbors. And this week's play on the word, I'm invested. I'm invested. I'm putting myself here in joy. I'm not hiding what I've been given, not burying it in fear. I am taking risks, spreading and growing for the sake of God's kingdom made known. The joyful investor will risk it all out of confidence in who God is. Not out of confidence in themselves, but in God. And the fearful investor will hide it all away in fear, trusting neither God nor themselves to bring about any good from what they've already been given. We all choose to put our energy, our gifts, our finances, and our resources somewhere. The question is, what feeling do we accompany with those choices? Are we joyful? Are we saying, yes, God, thank you, God, use it, God, use me, God? Or are we fearful? Please, God, don't take it away. Don't disrupt what's good enough for anything more. Let me hide, God. That's the only safe bet. As a church, are we joyful about what we've got in our endowment? Are we willing to use it, risk it, at an advisable 4% borrowing rate? Are we willing to imagine what kind of ministry God could do with those resources? Or as a church, are we fearful about our endowment and its use and our future? And friends, I'm, I'm not going to lie, we've kind of already answered that question in the name that we gave the part of our endowment we use. It's called the Rainy Day Fund. The Rainy Day Fund! Not the Joyful Dreamer Fund. Not the Beatitude Fund or the Matthew 25 Ministry Account or the Gratitude, Joy, and Blessing Fund. It's not the Give Back Fund. It's the Rainy Day Fund. That's the name of a fearful investment. We'll hide it away for just in case. No, we will use it for the sake of God's kingdom made known. It was given to us to be used for the sake of ministry not given to us to be hidden away in fear. What will we do with this extravagant, extraordinary, over-the-top gift that we have been given? And not just we as a church and the church endowment, but the many, many gifts of our individual lives will we step out in joy, willing to risk it all for the sake of love, grace and forgiveness as made known in Jesus Christ our Lord, or will we hold ourselves back, hiding in fear? The last word of our stewardship series is, I'm invested. The last question is, invested with what? Invested with joy or invested with fear? For the sake of God's kingdom made known, may it be joy. Amen.
receive not only our offerings and our tithes, but our pledges for the year to come. All of these are given in trust and in confidence, not in ourselves, but in God. We know God is good, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and in gratitude. And with great joy, we choose to give back. It is an act of worship to give our offerings, tithes and pledges. At the time of recording, we had received 40 pledges, totaling over $150,000 for the 2021 year. That means that we are halfway there, both in pledging units and in funds. This is a good place to be, but we need your help to cross the line. Here are the voices of just some of those who have pledged for the year to come. We're, We're in. in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Only the cat wants out, but I'm in. Hi. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. This is Marco, and Larry and I are in with our pledge. I'm in. I'm in. We're in. With these voices and with all of the pledges received and those yet to be received, we pray. God, use us the First Presbyterian Church of Cranberry. With all humility, we pray that you would align our purposes with your purposes and our vision with your vision, and that in the year to come, your name would be glorified, your salvation shared, and your justice made known through this congregation. Thank you, God, for who you are and who you invite us to be. Let God's children joyfully say together, Amen. your hearts with mine in prayer. Almighty and ever faithful God, we gratefully acknowledge your mercy and humbly admit our need as we pledge our trust in you and in each other. Trusting in your grace, we respond to your call for discipleship by shaping our lives in imitation of Christ. We profess that the call to discipleship requires us to be good stewards of your gifts. We receive those gifts gratefully, we cherish them, and we use them responsibly in practice and love with others. We pledge to you our ongoing commitment and promise to live as those who are fully invested in continuing the ministry that Christ began on this earth. As stewards, it is our responsibility to call others to that same endeavor. It is our fervent hope and prayer that you who began this good work in us will bring it to fulfillment in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord God, we praise you, and in your name we commit ourselves to be good people on this earth, faithful people, and the gifts that you have entrusted to us will be shared along with our time and our talent. 
We will use these gifts, O Lord, as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus Christ. God of love and mercy, we are a congregation and a community of people who care, people who are expressing your compassion through our words and our actions. Help us to remember that, like God, our giving knows no ending. As the COVID-19 numbers continue to rise beyond anything we expected, Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering from illnesses, grief, isolation, fear, and stress. Help us to share your love, grace, peace, and forgiveness with all those in need. As a family of faith, O Lord, we pray with grateful hearts in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, go out into the world to invest those God-given talents, gifts, and resources in the work of the kingdom made known. Invest with great joy, leave all fear behind, and trust in the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and keep you this day and always. Alleluia. Amen.